Hey yo, this is T.O.T. Ever since the release of 4.1, the Hersher of Thunder struck thunder and fear on many foes in Honkai Impact 3rd. She was unmatched in her lane up to the point of Mobius' release in 5.1. For 10 patches, the Hersher of Cooking opened up numerous cans of whoop ass for 10 patches and still has a strong presence in the game even today as of patch 5.6. Typically, when a new character is released, MiHoYo will give players plenty of reason to use them. Only after a long period of time has passed can a character's true standing be determined. There has been enough time that has passed, and I feel I can accurately gauge where her standing and the climate is at. The aim of this video is to help break down her value, team comp suggestions, and gear. With some players having easier access to SS rank, the Hersher of Cooking serves twice. <laughs> If you are a player that is on the CN server and or you play in Nirvana tier quite frankly, this video is not aimed at you. This video will be for players looking to play at a Red Lotus level and have coverage from Memorial Arena for Global and C at Masters or Exalted level. Pros Very high coverage in Memorial Arena as she can be used as a DPS or a team lead support. Very commonly, if she is an SP battery support, she is paired with Hersher or Flamesian. Basically, 9 out of 10 Memorial Arena weeks, she'll be usable one way or another. Regains SP fairly quickly, and 10% of that goes to other party members with one of her passives. This passive can make a, a big difference in long set fights where you need to use multiple ultimate casts in a single fight. Arguably, the safest character to play in Legion Realm, given the attack spam build is easy to execute and the Bombard build makes most attacks with. Has shared skills with Lightning Empress, one of the most used characters in Memorial Arena. A very good iframe on her weapon cast at pre-arm level. Can still get great usage out of her for Master Tier Abyss content. Gains another 30% bonus damage fighting mechs, and since she already has type counter advantage being psychic, that means she gets 60% instead. Her share of thunder is a mech bully to say the least. Has one of the best CC paralyzed in the game, if not the best, through bombard, which stops any foe in their tracks. A delayable ultimate evasion time fracture. Also, this character has time fractures like nobody's business. With the exception of Elysian Realm, she cannot die while in ultimate burst form. This is a huge factor for Masters players given that they have to deal with a bleed mechanic for their abyss. At SS rank, her bombard not only lasts longer, but hits pretty hard. Next up, we'll cover the cons for Hersher of Thunder. She has become niche in terms of abyss for exalted content. There may be one or two bosses at most per patch she could be viable for as an option. Granted, this is the fate all DPS characters will go through at some point. Supports may or may not have a longer longevity presence. Most of her damage comes from her burst. There are characters that would be able to get their ultimate off faster due to having a lower ultimate cost and not 125 like her share of thunder. Lower cost ultimates make getting high scores in Memorial Arena easier. Her team lead skill, while one of the best for Memorial Arena, is not the best for Abyss given that you start off with 90 SP by default, which makes the SP part of her team lead skill not useful. Beyond that, there are multiple characters in the game that have a team lead of having three unique character types. Having Sage Fuwa and Hersher Thunder in the same party, as example, makes it impossible to meet requirements. Bombard and Ultimate may end up having lackluster damage at S rank depending on player expectation. <laughs> Next up, I will briefly cover some recommendations for general Hersher of Thunder support gear. You have the Jin Shang Tang top and mid piece with Newton B. And then another option that you have is Teresa Gluttony top, my beach party mid with Newton bottom. Of course, most of these items you can get from the exchange shop now in these days. And I believe Teresa Gluttony T you can craft from the foundry. Recommendations for Hersher of Thunder DPS gear. You can either go with full set Bernars or you can get them with the Zen Yai top and bottom with Bernars middle piece. We'll do a basic run through on support character options for Hersher of Thunder next. Budget support options that you could use for your lightning supports for Hersher of Thunder until you can get into more specific gear later on. 
Fuwa Magician top and bottom with Tesla Band M. And a more universal would be Tong Geneve with top and bottom being used with Tesla Band M. You also have another option of using the Jin Shintang top and middle with Newton B. Now we'll go into the actual characters. Lightning Empress is the non-awakened version of Hi Hersher of Thunder, which means certain skill levels that Lightning Empress has, Hersher of Thunder will obtain the same levels. Lightning Empress, even in 5.6, still has a lot of usage in Memorial Arena due to her initial battery ability. As a player, you should ideally aim to get Lightning Empress to SSS point at some time, if you intend on taking Memorial Arena somewhat serious later on. Shadow Knight's main support function, least for Hersher of Thunder, is the 5% lightning damage buff she provides as a dorm buff. If you don't obtain her from dorm, you will have multiple chances to obtain her from various event S rank eggs over time. Having Lightning Empress, Shadow Knight, and Hersher of Thunder would meet a 15% lightning damage buff by default, which could go up to 21% while all three being SS rank or higher. Getting Shadow Knight to SS is low priority in comparison to other options available from Ancient Legacy. Masters players can skip out on Shadow Knight, but should be a consideration for Exalted Tier players. Starting off at entry level for the super budget, we have Wolves Dawn. At SS rank, she will obtain a shield that can increase non-physical damage by 30%. I do not recommend spending a lot of Asterite on this character to get them to SS rank. The fragments can be obtained from doing open world tasks and you may end up pulling some copies on certain S rank character banners. From Memorial Arena, we have Divine Prayer, who is the character who you will very commonly see used with lightning based teams. The main appeal she brings to the table is her long time fracture based on her ultimate in SP. Her share of thunder makes gaining the SP required very accessible. Weapon wise and a lightning top, comp she typically will use thunder kakaku however i don't recommend going out of your way to obtain this weapon if you obtain it as an off rate on some gear banner gg instead you can craft fang wings ping pen ones which should help eventually help you get 10 attack to all valks once you obtain oblivion down Fallen Rosemary is a sub DPS character with some buffing function she provides primarily for lightning based teams. The biggest pro I have found with this character is that her buffing isn't tied to her ultimate, but rather through her standard charge attack. That makes team SP requirement a lot lower. When she obtains her pre-arm and exalted content, charge attacks that summon her circle become much easier. Her bird room can also recover SP for the Valk on field. And given that she is a quantum type character, you can use the quantum collapse off of her ultimate to deal with quantum type enemies. This is, while this is niche, when it is useful, it is very powerful. Fischl is a solid lightning support that can force cast her own QTE time fracture. The main appeal of Fischl is that she has very high hit counts off of her summon Oz, which is a key factor in getting good times on hit count. Husk. Sage Fuwa is still the best non-physical support character due to her flexibility and the only support in the game that has elemental breach in her kit. While she won't get much uses in Masters Mari Memorial Arena because bosses are too paper, she will have usage in Exalted Tier due to SSS bosses. Her signature Stigmata Margrave is now forgeable as well. Her signature gauntlet, gauntlet will be mandatory to have. If you are a newer player, I do not recommend skipping out on this character unless a future character release has her same level of coverage but performs better. The fact of the matter is, Sage Fu Wall can still buff any DPS that is non-physical. This is amazing coverage, especially for newer players that don't have the funds and or currency to focus on more niche supports until much later on. Lastly, we have Eden. As an imaginary character, she'll be able to instantly kill imaginary targets seed phase with her ultimate if they have 20% HP or lower. She'll provide lightning buffs and help team recover SP. This has been a repeating mechanic of imaginary characters thus far. It's hard to say how impactful her buffing will be in the final version, but she is somebody I would keep an eye, eye out on for Hersha of Thunder usage. If she operates the same in the same dynamic fashion as Pardo does for Ice, then Eden may replace Sage Fu Wall in most lightning team scenarios. Next up, I will briefly go over Eden versus Fischl. 
There are a lot of questions in the community at the moment about Eden vs. Fischl. While live version may prove otherwise, there is a chance that Fischl will become a more niche lightning support. Given that Fischl's ultimate hits so many times, I suspect she'll continue to be the go-to default support for hit count husk boss. If Eden provides stronger buffing, I suspect she'll be the standard lightning support outside of that instance. This does remind me of the Sakura Rondo and Raven dynamic. Sakura Rondo was given a pre-arm, which made her a very important factor in fire based teams. This importance was most highlighted against Rhymestar, whom has a fire bar that needs to be taken out to deal max damage. Raven came out and made Sakura Rondo niche, given that Ra Raven provides stronger buffs at the cost of needing to farm more SP. Sakura Rondo still sees plenty of usage on Rhymestar and may even be seen in certain fire team comps dealing with Andreas. Outside of that, I would only expect to see Rondo being used if Memorial Arena had a week where two fire teams are needed. I suspect a similar dynamic would take place with Fischl and Eden. Only live version would provide people with the answers. Next, we will very briefly cover elves that Hersher of Cooking could use. If you are free to play, elves are very low priority as they are one of the last aspects that you will focus on. If you do want to cover as much ground as possible, Fuji is still really great. She will buff all non-physical damage with her ultimate and also force QTE of all fire Valks. So now I'll briefly go over the two lightning elves, Bella and Clean. While Bella does have stronger damage in single target scenarios, Clean's superior utility results in the end damage being higher. At three star, Clean has the ability to lower the switch cooldown of characters as well. Bella is skippable unless you are somebody that is an elf collector and or you just prefer to go after Bella instead of Clean. In this section, I'll briefly go over some signets you may consider using if you use Hersher of Cooking in Elysian Realm. Do note, I will not be mentioning the new Flame Chaser signets as I have no personal experience using them. I will attempt to provide suggestions for the Attack Spam build and the Bombard build. Elysia. Blessing of the Hazy Moon and Blessing of Soyokonumiya are the only two signets that you'll need for the Attack Spam build. The other three signets will be for the Bombard build. Depending on your SP recovery, you may or may not need Blessing of Soyoku Yumi with the Bombard build. Kevin. His signets will not be needed for the attack spam build at all, given that the build doesn't use ultimates at all. Most signets are useful except physical damage or physical breach. His signets are very useful for Bombard build as that build focuses on spamming ultimates. Sakura's signets tend to be very useful for the Bombard build given that you can force proc the ultimate evasions. These signets might be of some use for you with the attack spam build as well, but might not give you as much mileage. I personally like the one of her core ones to where you use an ultimate evasion and it will send a bunch of blades at the enemy. This is a very easy way of cl clearing the last mech phase on the husk boss before you take out the final remaining bars of its HP. Sue. Sue signets work on either build. Should prioritize the hit, hit count increase signets than the ones that increase damage for a certain time once a hit count of 150 is reached and resets. Kalpis. Kalpis signets start becoming an option when you reach higher difficulty tiers in the Legion Realm. These can work for either build. Do note that if you are playing Bombard build, it will be important to obtain the Slaughter Signet to keep Hersher of Thunder's HP low since she naturally heals during her burst phase. Eden. For Bombard build, I didn't find most of her signets useful since they are mainly built around not using your SP, which Bombard build will do just that. Tax Band build does work really well since you'll be capped on SP. Fuwa. Basically, if you get hit a lot, Fuwa signets probably won't be of much use to you. The Remembrance Sigil Resolve will provide iframes for blocking damage, which should help maintain the stacks. There is a limit. Her signets would work in good conjunction with Kalpis ones since, her HP, since your HP would be low in that scenario. Mobius. Even though Mobius signets are not as good as they once were, they are still very strong. Bombard build or attack spam build are both good for Mobius signets. I personally found the support 
summon CD reduction, one of the most valuable of Mobius signets. Is Hersher of Thunder worth the SS rank? If you are in Masters tier or you are a free to play player, I would for sure say no. In Masters tier, SS would be overkill power wise, in my opinion. While free to play should save their crystals to address coverage. For the spenders out there, it's really up to you. In the context of exalted tier content, SS DPS characters are starting to become more common. This has been a thing since the battle pass changes back when Hersher of the Void Fragments were made available through it in the past. SS DPS rank characters will start to become more common as time goes on. I got her to SS rank through the advanced banner, but even if I had not, I would have still been able to through the battle pass season theme that covers patch 5.4 through 5.7. This battle pass season theme is the cheapest way to get her to SS in my opinion. Given that I use her a lot in Memorial Arena and Elysian Realm, I concluded it was worth it for me. Your mileage with a character may be different and therefore not worth. Spend responsibly. Hopefully, there was something of usage to you in this video. Typically, new characters will get good treatment from a Mihalyo in regards to content coverage, but only viewing the changes in the game over time can we really make a good assessment on where a character really stands at. Good luck on your account building. If you have watched or listened to all this, I want to say thank you and deuces.